an interesting thing doing intros because you have to try and sell what you're going to show um and as well it's the same as every week i'm selling what i do every week which is weird as you will no doubt have noticed that intro jingle was different and of course the reason for this was uh i got bored of the old one um but we might go back to that when i'm less bored of it uh, but the point being um it's the same every week but now it's different and the content's different but i was thinking i might put an advert halfway through the show to spice things up a little bit no one knows why that face was but it's because my pause button doesn't work i need to fix that now the reason why the pause did uh, i wasn't hitting the pause button um <laughs> right so normal show uh normal features and let's jump in um now an interesting thing i realized was we, we, we tend to have like a white background week and a black background week and that's obviously sorry spoiler alert there obviously completely uh, accidental but this week we have a mixture i'm probably sure it's not um so clear cut either that there is a mixture um oh actually look oh what's that that is a new cabinet um and well actually there's not much more to say other than this new cabinet you'll see that i've actually a little bit behind on on cleaning it, it's taken me like three days to get this thing set up um and it's not been a fun three days particularly but i think i've got pretty much everything in there now that that should belong and you'll notice that like there's basically zero in the bottom shelf there's pretty much zero in the third shelf that one's reasonable that's like more like dragon head stuff there can't really see but i've actually turned off the monitor because the reflection was too much but there that is that's the dragon head shelf i think we're still on there and then it's the elder shelf i'm hoping um i might even be in shot uh yeah basically i needed i, I got very um fed up with uh the detail from ikea um fed up with the dental from ikea yeah so uh, maybe three months ago even now because this thing wasn't in stock for so long uh i sold them on ebay both of them for like 60 quid maybe yeah probably 60 quid because when i bought them they were 40. anyway point being you, you don't have much um area like on the glass i was running i was running out quite quickly of, of the space and i grew tired so i think i was tired is the right word i basically wanted more space what a more uh, width if that's length i suppose it's all relative what it longer this way um and i got it with these uh and i can't remember why i wanted it. i think basically my dream is still to paint an army exactly like heavy metal style from 1999 and i want to have like um basically an army box from then with all the and sealed for some reason in the back and then the army painted in front and actually, in probably in hindsight, uh, I don't even think I can do that with this one. Um, I think it'll be a squeeze. So I actually think I probably need to upgrade when I've done that. But, you know, that's a really, really long way away. I don't think I could paint that quickly because I don't paint. Ah, we're getting there, though. Once this is done, I can paint, like, totally freely, uh, which actually leads me on to what the advert may well be today. So let's get in because it's been four minutes. Four minutes long. Richard Gray, um, a prolific Golden Demon winner, uh, and he paints models. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's because, I think, like, wait, I can sell it better than that. It's so basically he does courses, he does painting, uh, and he's particularly good at freehand. Um, and when I say particularly good at freehand, that's not to say that this isn't good. What it's saying is that actually he's probably one of the, the world's best at freehand. So maybe particularly good is an understatement. Uh, he's exceptionally good. He's a, 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 a leader in the industry of freehand. Um, so, but he does, he does, he does, I think, revolve around uh, Games Workshop models most. Uh, and he actually, on his website, I'll put the link in, obviously, 
he uh, essentially like Patreon, but he's moved to his own website. Although he, he might still have a patron, uh, but I believe he's he's exclusively on the website. But don't quote me. Sorry. Wait, can you hear that? Yeah, no, you can't. Basically, my cat's scratching my door to get in. I tried to let him in earlier, and he didn't come. Ah, and he's back. Yeah, this is Momo, the boy that um, thoroughly enjoys scratching, waiting for me, and then running to jump on my desk, and then mostly when I'm eating. He will stick his tail and ass in my mouth. Wait, <laughs> not actually in my mouth, like around, you know, you know what cats do if you have them, that is. Um, yeah, this basically. Anyway, Richard. So this, yeah, this, uh, I, I, obviously I'm following him or I saw it. I, I, I'm not sure, but basically, yeah, this, this definitely caught my eye um, quite strongly. That's the right saying, because it's just black and white. Maybe right one sec, Momo. Yeah, like I don't. I, I, in my head, right, creating contrast would be a lot easier. But actually, it's really, really hard. I think to do, to, especially to this scale or level scale. Scale being like scale of awesomeness. Um, I think can't pinpoint why. I guess because black and white, it's, it's just too too. Sh you know, they're shades. Um, and to make it look like this. Anyway, I love it. I really do love it. Um, I think it's an exceptional paint job. And I, obviously, Richard is a pro. I don't mean that like he's just a professional, because obviously he is. That would go without saying. Uh, more that he is a good pro at what he does. Uh, yeah. And then, obviously, this was the spoiler. Um, and it's interesting that, like, I have no... Um, it might surprise you, but like a plan, I don't really have a plan per se of who I'm going to pick. Uh, if it comes up and it, it, it moves me in some artistic or autistic way, um, then I'll pick it. So it's interesting that Andy and Richard both came up in the same show because I would say Andy more so, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, I would say does other things than Games Workshop. He's obviously won a lot of Golden Demons as well. Um, and you can probably see a bit why when, when looking at this. Uh, and it actually, at the post, he, he mentioned that he's sort of lost his mojo, but uh, not in a sexual way. Um, and yeah, I guess if this is what you're producing when you've, oh, well, actually his point was that this is kind of reconfigured him, uh, made it slightly, but anyway, point being, it's really nice. Uh, and it's Elder, obviously. Um, wait, wasn't the point that he actually paints other things other than games which are like busts. He saw he Colt Paint have their own range of models, and, and none of them are like twenty eight mil. They're all busts or seventy five, if I remember correctly. So yeah, it's I mean it's brilliant. It's Elder. It's Warlocks. It's 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 what I love. I don't know why, but interestingly, it's probably from the the range that I don't really like, which is newer range. Still, it's a fantastic job. Goes to show what you can do with 28 mil. I'm guessing you would think this isn't a hard name. So, uh, Trent. No, I'm joking. Obviously, I don't know how to spell it. Denison? Denison? I, I, I'm so sure I know the name quite well. Also, you'll see, look, like grey background, darker grey background. Well, has this, has this background got like a hint of pink in it, maybe, or purple? Just be his white balance, but then black. So it's not just black or white. Anyway, um, I thought this was brilliant because I never, like, whenever I see any character, it's always good. I could never envision something being evil unless it's obviously a demon or a devil or blah, blah, blah. But this, is, this was so clearly just a happy bloke on a sheep. Um, but my man's made it evil, basically, and, and really well done as well. And, Interesting, like similarly to Richards, it's black and white mostly, um, except for obviously the, the key the reds and the skin. Um, the reds, in my opinion, are to make it more evil. And I like that you're, you, not you, as in I'm not talking to you, Trent. I, just, I like that there's the red, the commonality between the, and the, um, <laughs> and probably the skin as well. But yeah, other than if you just take those things out, you know, 
It's just black and white. Hold on. Is that right? Very much. I mean, I can't see any color. Maybe that's why it's subtle. Maybe some green on the sheepskin, but I don't think so. Anyway, it's brilliant. And I really like it. I like it because it's different. Kind of original. Um, which every time I think it's, it's harder and harder to be original in the, uh, the painting world and people just keep doing it. I suppose that's kind of what keeps everything interesting. Ha! Huh. My memory is on point. So there was another one. And then this is it obviously not in a photo-ish background. And, and yeah, I like actually that this in some way has more contrast, like probably on the phone it was taken. Um, so it's, this is obviously the representation of what it actually looks like. So seeing it on a, on, a, on a lighter background, you get those contrasts a lot more. Um, and I just thought I would include it because I like a second photo. And then obviously you saw this, which actually wasn't even meant to, this was meant to be the first one, but the green. So I will start here. Um, yeah, I really like it. And I hate Space Marines. Uh, and the caption was Death to Xenos or something, which is kind of fine if it's Tyranids, um, but not if it's Elder. Should, should love them. Um, but when I saw this, I didn't realise it was green stuff, actually, or got it built on top of a normal uh, model. I just thought it was a, a normal Games Workshop model. Um, but it's clearly not. But, yeah, I think um, I think this is the style, actually, that I've been leaning towards more when painting um, Games Workshop stuff. So I have a three up of a Space Marine that they, they released to staff members, I think on their 30th anniversary or 500 stores or something. Um, but it's a big chunk of metal. It's like 850 grams, Albert and I weighed it, which is nuts. It's really nuts. But I've painted it in a, in a really kind of similar way, which is just, but not, not, not so subtly well. Uh, I've just kind of, the, the highlighting I've done in a similar way. Um, and I I've been trying to think of a way to resolve it to keep that interest because it, it gets quite quickly quite boring when everything's highlighted in the same way, but like kind of contrasty, extreme way. So I'm I'm really liking the um, you know the reds underneath, basically like the OSL essentially. Um, and then he also has other things on it, whereas the the three up is literally just one of the 1999 Space Marines when it first went to plastic. So there's not really much in the terms of detailing. And it, and this is even, this is 28 mil, which is even more, I suppose you can paint that way. Um, but yeah, I like it a lot. So interesting for me, when I saw here, it was like ultra defined, clear. And then I saw here and I was like, oh wow. Like, I don't know how to explain it properly, but like, there's not a huge amount of crispness on the on the cut on the sculpting, the shoulder pad, uh, the little emblem on the sword, you know that little thing. Um, it's generally it's like not super crisp, and then he's managed to resolve it super well, in, for me. Like, like look at the little pe um, lapels. They're just they're, oh, yeah, it sounds like an insult or rude, but they're like they're they're kind of like blobs without definition. In the set in the way you would get from a 3d uh thing currently right but then look how good it looks like it doesn't look like it's lacking detail at all on the painted version um so it's just like yeah antonio i didn't actually even try and pronounce the name did i um <laughs> it's always right pol vienti pol vienti hmm. i'm guessing italian <laughs> <laughs> it's always uh fun for me anyway uh but uh, yeah genuinely i love the piece and i love it more than it's heavily greened uh, as they say and last the fifth oh i didn't do my abba ah abba so abba right do you no. <laughs> i could say do you want to see a show by jamie about painting um, it's because I didn't do any like effects or like fade ins or fades outs. So I bought a box from France, and in said box is my favourite edition, which is third edition forty k, third edition forty k, and then fifth edition fantasy. Uh, so this box is the retail package they would send you if you were thinking about investing, and by investing I mean buying and selling GW products. So 
Um, it seems in France they were a little bit more uh, liberal with their what they sent, I believe. Um, but they sent you a white dwarf, which is French, so I, I flicked through it. It was pretty boring because I don't speak French. They send you this. Hang on, is that upside down? Which obviously means nothing to me. And then they send you like a pamphlet breaking down all the prices, um, which is fascinating. And I would love one of these in English. But the important part is this is the content. Um, uh, all right, I have to go here. Um, well, it's all sealed for one, which is obviously, you know, I love. Uh, but this is the key. Let's move you. <laughs> Wait. The advert. Do you want to see? Well, it's an advert, which means it's definitely happening. We are going to do an unboxing on the worst paints that ever existed for GW to produce, which was the bullet top black lids. Uh, but for me, these are the absolute best paints that were ever made. The black screw lids, the black flip lids, and then finally they they moved to the clear plot lids. And then obviously they changed and they stopped buying from the uh, French art suppliers or somebody. Uh, moved to their own, I believe. But these were thicker uh, and they were kind of designed to allow you to water down your paints. But the point is my favourite paints and also the first ever paint set I bought except 40k's version. So a lot of nostalgia here and um, two brushes. Look at that. Fucking hell. Two brushes. What were they thinking? Um, I'm, I'm just, like talking about it now. I'm getting excited about opening. The prospect that these aren't dry. It's borderline impossible that they're not dry. But there was a little bit of wet damage on the box. Uh, so, hold on. Can't see it. Not worth it. So, point is, they weren't necessarily stored in a dry place. So, if it was cold and wet, they might be alive. And that would be a remarkable feat. So, that's the advert. Stormtroopers! Um, obviously, I've never been a guard man. But, man alive. Look at it sealed and obviously i told you it's sealed and you could clearly see it was sealed but advert over let's get back to it oh we're back to richard hold on yep alfonso <laughs> i'm laughing because i've heard you say this your surname a lot of times and i know i've got to get it wrong but fuck it alfonso gerardes gerard gerardes gerardes Bloody hell. Giraldes. Gil. Giraldes. Yeah. Banshee. Uh, this is his. Actually, probably fairly old now that he painted it, but he is releasing now the tutorials or step by steps on his miniatureartacademy.com. Um, and I genuinely like this paint job. Um, and I hesitated there because I don't necessarily love the model, um, which is, well, it's not like I, I hate it, but it's, it's, I think it's just, it's too evil. Like the beast alone is brilliant, but the woman, I would have rather it was an elf probably, and maybe take the armor off. So he's not so, I mean, I get armor though, you can protect it, but yeah, I, I think I just needed it to be it. Yeah, a good character. I'm not sure why I have this like weird aversion to things that are like evil. She might not even be evil. I mean, the horns on her head kind of suggest to me she is evil. But yeah, if you're interested, it's there. Um, and it's a shame actually I, I couldn't include a photo from the other angle. This is my favorite angle of it, uh, which well, you, you can see on the rocks, you've got the red um, from the fire or the volcano or something. But on the other side, it's really red. Um, and yeah, I've been trying to do this kind of painting style. And by that, I just mean painting. Like, yeah, I know, I know, obviously, it's like Faster Shadow or OSL or Directional Light, but it's a different feeling that I'm, I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't articulate it. 
basically being able to paint the same model um, in two different environments kind of is, is I find it very hard to for example paint a shadow or paint some sort of subtle nuanced thing um, and he's oh well obviously he's done it and can do it uh, and I actually like a, there's a lot of cast of shadows here as well like on the bones at the back of the beast you've got the two and then you can't see my mouse the shadow from the uh, flowing stuff I probably oh, it's actually probably here isn't it anyway um the paint job's just yeah it's it's brilliant and the greens and stuff so i think i there's a lot of things i would have liked to have done on my dragon that i didn't paint very but i still need to finish it uh that he's done here um so i think it's in a way um i'm i'm i'm, I'm finding as i've been told god i should remember your name the guy who left a comment like it hit me quite hard actually quite it resonated i have not had chance to paint so it means it's like seven days but the idea of painting in 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 how i want to paint and i think i've been trying to paint um how everybody else paints rather than just being completely free as it were uh and i think that's massively important really and i think i've, I've been kind of like daydreaming about it and trying to remove the shackles uh that i've been put on myself really and I'm looking forward to painting, painting um, without any kind of thought process past what I know about painting, if that makes sense, rather than I like this on this model, let me try and replicate it more like I'm, I've learned things about contrast, color theory, all this kind of carry on. Um, and now I just want to apply that to my own models in, in a style that I can feel, if that makes sense, like something that I care and love about um went canadian there for some reason uh <laughs> so thank you everyone for tuning in 22 minutes um this is the lull of the episode where i always intrinsically clearly do not want the episode to end but i have nothing planned to say uh so i try and drag it out and i really shouldn't i should just be like thanks guys thanks for watching um as always <laughs> you stay classy uh no as always I have nothing to say other than I'm going to try and do some content outside of this top five, which is what I said a few weeks ago. I want to, and that is going to be the unboxing, which is basically the opening and finding out if these paints are dead. And I really hope they're not dead. Um, even though actually like I only want three of the paints, but it's more like principle, like this legacy thing that we've got them saved um, and we've had them for, in fact, let's find out. Okay, I haven't looked yet. Okay, now I think. Oh, this smells nice. I think it's 99, but it could possibly be 98 that the screw lids existed. Certainly not 97, and definitely not 2000. So 19, uh, probably actually 98, but I'm going to go with 99. Yeah, okay, 98. Um, yep. Yeah. There we go. 1998 um and the reason why i don't mind opening this box is because it's french so um, it's, it's not got the same um i mean obviously everything else is the same but the same nostalgic feeling i did manage to drag it out for another minute so that's cool for what for whatever reason um so thank you guys yeah um if you as always have been like i think there's been like three or four people that commented that's brilliant um and i need to reply to the latest batch so thank you, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the week, maybe, if not Friday. <laughs>